All right, let's move on to Winnipeg, the final of the Western Conference, and that is Devin. Hello. Uh, so, <laughs> so I, I'm going to start with uh, the, the no movement clause of uh, Blake Wheeler. Um, surprisingly enough, I did protect uh, Kyle Connor. I know that's a big shock. Uh, you have Mark Shifley, uh, Nikolai Ehlers, uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois on that as well. That were kind of no-brainers for me. Um, if uh, if you're kind of wondering why I didn't uh, pick Paul Stasny, he's 35 and he's a UFA this year. Um, going down the list again, you have uh, Adam Lowry, who is 28. Uh, he's signed until 2026. Uh, Andrew Kopp, uh, who goes up and down the lineup, um, he can be in your top six or easily enough within your uh, your your middle six that uh, he, he can move up and down the lineup depending on whether or not there's some injuries or not. Um, and uh, so, so that's my forward group. Um, if you look at the defensive core, Josh Morrissey, no brainer, Neil Pionk, no brainer. And you know what? If uh, I, I can understand the argument, if you want to go uh, potentially a Sammy Niku or a uh, Dylan DeMello, but I went to Logan Stanley. I thought that uh, he's 23 years old, he's an RFA this year, he's a big defenseman that uh, I, I feel like he, he's, he's really shown his true colors within um, within the NHL and being able to, to play at this level. Even though he is a massive body, I think that he has a, a good potential to be a, a, a uh, not, not exactly obviously the same as Zidane Ochara within the sleep, but uh, he, he can make a big impact, uh, physical defenseman. He can move the puck well, and that, that, that's the biggest thing within a uh, big defenseman is that if, uh, if, if you can hit, Great, but you need to be able to move that puck, and uh, I feel like he he definitely has been able to do that within this year. So that's why I have him over Demello and a Sammy Niku, and then obviously you know uh, Connor Hellebuck. He's a phenomenal goalie. Uh, he won the Vesna last year, and um, that that was no brainer. But um, overall, that that's what I have. I'm impressed that you got Logan Stanley on that list. I mean, I think if you go by what have you done for me lately, he was an impact player for the Jets in their playoff run here. That this, uh, I mean, if we can call it a run, it was only eight games, but but yeah, no, I think that's uh, that's a very sound choice there. Yeah, that the I, I was listening to the Oilers YYC podcast uh, for their playoff preview against the Jets, and they completely and all of us completely underestimated. The, the Winnipeg Jets defense, but specifically, and I'm not trying to embarrass anybody, but I think we really underestimated what Logan Stanley brought to the team. Yeah. Uh, so that's, I, I, I have no problem with your list. I think it's a, it's perfect. I don't have an issue. I, it, the, the only issue I have is, and it's not your, and it's just where, where um, Winnipeg is at is leaving Mason Appleton exposed. Like, yeah, it's just, he's, I, I really like, what he brings and i think it's going to be an interesting decision with seattle to, to whether they go mason appleton or they go off on the blue line with someone like a dylan Zamello. yeah so then I mean, it what would you... comes down to numbers there i think I, 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 that, yeah. that's the thing is i don't know who i would i would take yeah. take off it's just i look at them like oh mason appleton ooh dylan Zamello. like i i i understand I, I i think logan stanley's the right pick on the blue line but Leaving Dylan DeMello, who I think is a, a really good uh, uh, pair, pairing with with Josh Morrissey, and then as well as Mason Appleton, who is just he's a buzzsaw. Like he he's a I I, I love watching him play as, as a in, in a bottom in a third line role. I really like him. He's only twenty five. He's uh, he's he, he's under under uh, team control for a few more years. Um, he's an RFA next season. Like I, I just, I look at that and I go, I don't know what I would change, but I just, I would hate to leave Mason Appleton exposed. If if I was going to go through it, it'd be, it'd be a very fifty-one to forty-nine percent mix of. Okay, I think if if I'm going to protect Appleton, I would have to expose Lowry. Uh, that that contract it probably won't age that well considering he uh, he has uh, his contract is up in 2026 
He's 20 years old. Yes, the cap hit is very, very minimal, just a shade under $3 million. Uh, uh, the only other person I could think of or player that I could think of to, to take off there would be um, an Andrew Kopp. But uh, he, you have team control within this year to, uh, to, to get him under contract, which could be a lot less than Adam Lowry. But, yeah, man, I, I'm with you. I, I, and as far as DeMello goes, I man, I really – wished and hoped that Calgary was able to to pick him up at the trade deadline um he was a uh, he was a, he was a good um a good player and I thought that uh, he could have been a, a massive impact player within that Calgary lineup so yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if if he's left unprotected that Seattle would take him 